Hi, my name is Scott Gibson with Beneath the Surface. I'm here with John Kaiser of the Kaiser Research Report Online. John, thanks for being with us. Scott, thanks for having me here. I wanted to talk to you because I've quoted you a couple times in terms of the stats that you've done on the industry. How many companies are out there? How much have how much have a certain amount of cash left or trading under certain levels? Can you share that with us? Yeah, Kaiser Research Online tracks currently 1,800 resource sector companies listed on the TSX and TSX Venture Exchange. And uh, we run statistics on the financial status of these companies. And uh, when we got all the financials from September 30th, they all came due at the end of December, I was shocked. 662 of these companies have less than $200,000 working capital left. That's about the money required to stay alive as a public company doing exactly nothing. And in the current market climate we are, where glass is half empty, uh, nobody believes that uh, your play can deliver anything, where people are worried that metal prices are headed down rather than up, these companies have nowhere to go but off a cliff. And what about uh, share price? Of those uh, 1,800 companies, 60% are trading below 20 cents. It, it is incredible. When At the end of 2008, um, when we had that huge meltdown, that blindside the sector, I thought it was, we would never see a bottom fishing opportunity like that again. I was wrong, except this time, there is a danger that the bottom is permanent that we don't just see 500 companies disappear that have no business in being in this sector, but we may see the other 1,000 companies that are still engaged in real exploration also die because of the structural changes that are afflicting this industry. Where do you think we go from here? Well, I think the biggest problem out there is that the investor, the retail investor, does not have the skill set or tools to visualize the economic value of a potential outcome. I'm not talking about a mine, which you value well based on cash flow and so on. I'm talking about a target that's taking shape as a deposit with such and such a grade that might be a mine of this nature with such and such cost. All of which numbers you process with the discounted cash flow model to create a net present value, which is what the thing would be worth if it became reality and went into production. So we are out in this market, people wander around, they don't know what to make of the target, they see these five cent prices in the stock, a company needs a million bucks, uh, they'll have a hundred million shares out at that, and they have a hundred percent, so five million valuation, but if they're, if they're correct, what's it worth? We need to see a change in the way the public uh, processes this information and makes it available to share it in a broader domain so that when the algo traders come into this system and bash around these very fragile juniors, there is an equilibrium valuation out there towards which the juniors can spring back to like a reed when the, uh, the fundamentals oriented value investors come in. Right now we have a situation where they are like little delicate saplings which the algo traders graze down to nothing and keep it from growing or worse trample it and snap it off at the base. This sector can't even get started with a discovery exploration cycle which really requires the, the valuation of the story to grow as the company does work. Well, what's the difference between 2008 and now? How we bounce back really quickly from 2008 and we may not here. In 2008, we were at the end of an eight-year uh, China super cycle driven funding boom where the failures of past exploration cycles were taken out of the woodwork, stuffed into juniors, and an army of engineers and uh, big company, former big company geologists went to work to demonstrate the feasibility of these deposits at the new higher real post-China China prices. And that was all going on. The companies had money, these projects were in midstream, but their stock prices got blindsided by the financial sector meltdown and we had a v-shaped recovery after that there were about 59 billion 
dollars worth of takeover bids prior to 2008. Since then, we've had another 50 billion dollars worth of takeover bids that have cleaned out all these better deposits. Now we're in a different situation. The stuff that people expect uh, will work well at say 360 copper or 1600 dollar gold that has been harvested, taken out of the system. What remains is more problematic, uh, maybe lower grade and so on. And in my view, they're well, in the market's view, the direction for metals is down rather than up based on negative macroeconomic projections. My own view is prices are sideways, which means that bringing in more of the same in terms of grade and so on, there's already stuff in the development pipeline that's in there ahead of you. There's no market appetite and the institutional money that drove uh, that period up to 2008, they have withdrawn from this sector, which is why I'm saying you got to now go to discovery exploration, back to finding deposits that work fabulously well at the current metal prices and can even handle a 25% decline over the next few years. Well, what are the type of companies we're looking for there? If you're looking where most of them are trading under 20 cents and most of them have less than $200,000, where's the niche, where's the sweet spot that you're looking at? Well, I, I'm biased towards companies that have liquidity. I think the market is hung up on, you know, 100 million shares being out and so, okay, there's too much stock. There's this old model of with tight, tight structure and so on. I, I think there's a big audience out there that wants to just buy these things and sell these things at will. So I would like to see companies that are below 20 cents even be willing to do dilutionary financings to get the capital to, to take creative, innovative targets, stories, and throw the money at it and deliver big 200, 500 million, billion dollar home runs. I mean, you think that the valuations even at 100 million shares for something that's 5, 10 cents is like 5 million to 10 million. Then you start doing the math and you're talking 10, 20, 50, 100 times gains. Hey, that can happen. And I'd like to see lots of people make money from a stock that's blown up. Something like a gold quest, which was at 6 cents, 100 and whatever, 40 million shares up, down to its last 600 grand. All done lots of work, got a resource estimate, not good enough, try some new geophysics, all of a sudden they get a big barn burner hole, stock runs to two dollars, 19 million the treasury, step out drilling doesn't quite confirm it, but now they got 19 million in the treasury, it's cheap at 70 cents, all kinds of people own it, they keep working and then they find something eventually that's worth a billion dollars and the stock then goes to five, ten bucks and gets bought out. That's what this market desperately needs, that type of scenario. Cinderella story to become a reality, one that banishes the Briex betrayal forever. Well, I'm, I'm biased. I do own Gold Quest. I, I would love if that we could. You should have warned me. I wouldn't have had mentioned it. <laughs> do you yourself? Do you? Own no, it? I don't. I'm completely oh, okay. neutral on it. But th that is what the market needs, because then once you have successes like that, people do make money, and that filters back into the other companies. So we're hoping for that kind of a scenario. What other companies do you like right now? Well, one which uh, I am personally quite biased because I put my money where my mouth is is Nevada Exploration Inc. And these guys now have about 140 million fully diluted, still only a million bucks in the treasury, uh, uh, just enough to carry on with what they do. They've got a strategy which is to find targets undercover in Nevada. And I'm watching some, you know, academics like John Montine put out theories explaining why have 250 million ounces of gold been found and mined in Nevada during the last uh, 30, 40 years? What is there so special? And what the answer he comes, comes up with says, oh my, only half of Nevada's gold has been found. All thanks to the peculiar basin and range topography, which about 10 million years after the gold was put down, dropped half of Nevada down into valleys and popped the other half up as ranges. And the stuff that's in, in now in gravel covered basins, that's where the other 300 million ounces remain to be found. And Barrick and Newmont don't own any of that. And if one of this favorite of mine with its Grass Valley project, which McEwen Mining is now the, the carrying them to uh, through feasibility, they're going to be drilling this year. This has a scale equivalent to Pipeline, Cortez, and Gold Rush. 
and it's actually within view of Cortez Hills, except going at a different angle, the wrong angle, where there's not supposed to be anything there. If they actually hit on something like that, it blows Nevada wide open, and you'll see the basin flanks of Nevada staked wall to wall by juniors, then using new innovative targeting tools like golden groundwater sampling to create a focal center for more conventional exploration. And Nevada exploration, these guys have been toiling at this for 10 years. It's an innovative approach. Uh, uh, they're, they're smart, they know their geology, they do all the stuff you're supposed to do. If you get a group like that, being right, that's how it's supposed to happen. And then you'll see that cloned and cloned over again and we'll get life breathed back into the junior sector. Nice, I don't own that one, but you do? You should. Uh, apparently I should, I'm gonna look into it. Thanks very much, John, for being with us. All right, thank you, Scott. Again, that's John Kaiser of Kaiser Research Online. My name is Scott Gibson with Beneath the Surface. Thanks for being with us.